Broadcasting live from Mishra's Foundry on the Plain of Dominaria, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham. Joining me is Cameron huh? and Kathleen. Ah! And this show, as ever, is brought to you by uh, Card Kingdom. Check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR for all your cardboard needs. I'm sure they're going to have pre-orders up for bro very shortly, if not already. Uh, so you can get yourself some 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 bro. Uh, also, this show... Oh, yeah. You, and you can ask them to send you a button. You can say, loading, ready, run, send me. Button, please. And they'll give you a little one-inch button. And uh, I think... I think we're still on the constitutional monarchy of cards, but we could be wrong. If you were at Magic 30 this past weekend, they had an exclusive button if you went to the Card Kingdom booth. Ooh. Ooh. But as it is for now, uh, happy Halloween, because it's going up on Halloween. Oh. I hope you have a spooky day. Uh, also, <laughs> this show and everything we do here at Loading Ready Run uh, on the Magic Channel and beyond is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. We really appreciate it. Way to go. Yeah. You did this. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. We really appreciate it. I can't believe uh, you've done this. I uh, I believe, actually, oh. looking at the spreadsheet, oh. uh, we have just switched over to uh, If I Live, I Have Lethal. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Classic. Which I That's believe it. is a quote from a real game that happened. Yeah, I think uh, that I, was... Yeah, from every third game, I believe. <laughs> I think that, yeah, that was that definitely came up on a Friday Night Paper fight. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a classic magic sentiment. Yeah. Mm. Uh, first, we're going to, or sorry, I was going to say, today we're going to be talking about previews for Bro, for Brothers War. Cause, bro, uh, bro, 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 Because so. we're recording this on Friday the 28th. And so yesterday they had their big sort of uh, reveal stream and talking about a lot of the, the world building and stuff. And they revealed a bunch of cards and all the mechanics. And so we're going to uh, talk about that Um But uh, first, just a couple other uh, small things. Uh, I recently had been harping on Twitter about um, Arena on mobile. Well, okay. So I I mentioned the the default lands thing because that's still annoying. And that's literally why I didn't buy this basic lands on Arena. Because it's like at this point, it just keeps defaulting to the... um, Adventures in the to the yeah. to the yeah to the Baldur's Gate ones Baldur's Gate ones which is it's it's now worse than it was before mm-hmm. um, and so I'm like all right whatever um, but I was talking to uh, Cube April I think actually and I said honestly one of the biggest things that bugs me is I wish that they had higher res uh, card art on mobile because I play a lot of Arena honestly on my iPad, not this one, but an, on an iPad Pro with a nice big screen and everything, and the card art looks like trash. Hmm. And I said that, and then, uh, so, and I know that it wasn't because I said that, because it was like a week later. <laughs> hmm. uh, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they rolled out an update to uh, the mobile version of Arena with um, a whole bunch of improved uh, improved card art. And now... On uh, on phone and on iPad, the art looks really nice. Nicely done, Graham. So yeah, nice. I did that. No, Graham it's... speaks. The wind blows. <laughs> if if that was true, then we'd have default land selection. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so props props to the to the team for that because now it's much nicer. Because I cannot express how bad it looked on mobile. And I for phones, I get it right, but it was like it was the same across any device. And so the iPad one was mm. technically the mobile version, and so it was like this like hyper compressed little JPEG. But it was you could see it real big, and it was, it was very bad. Uh, speaking of Arena, they just had Throne of Eldraine back on the uh, yeah. premier draft. I did a couple of them, and uh, I did I did like v- I did like mediocre. But it was fun. That was a f- I enjoyed that format, honestly. Yeah, uh, like it's very bomb heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, when you're playing Magic, you're playing Magic in that format. Um, that's very good, Cameron. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, reminds me of watching Hockey Night in Canada when I was a kid, and one of the commentators said, "If this team wants to win more games, they're going to have to score more goals." And we were all <laughs> like, "That is a former player." <laughs> uh, but, you know what? Sometimes it's just about filling the air, Cameron. It is. It is. You know, color commentary is like that. Thank yeah. you, Kathleen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I I had a couple of interesting games in um, Throne of Eldraine Limited when it was back. Uh, I got the Archon that makes every non-Archon creature a 3-3. I don't remember the name of that card, but, but yeah, it's, it's I, I remember card. that card. Yeah. yeah, and it makes two humans when it enters the battlefield. 
And an opponent played Clackbridge Troll against me, giving mm. me three goats, and then started hitting good game. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it was turn four, and they had an 8-8, eight, eight, and I had three blockers. Yeah. Um, and then I responded with the, the Archon, and then it, once again, they started, you know, spamming good game. Right. As one does. Yeah. 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 Because thanks for the three, three, three goats. Thanks for the nine power of yeah, goat. Th- yeah. Those goats got their revenge. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> oh, harmonious, harmonious archon. archon. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Four white, white, four, five flying non archon creatures at base power toughness, three, three. Mm-hmm. And you get two one ones. Yeah. I love <laughs> that's like big, sort of like be careful who you make fun of in high school energy, right? Yeah. With like suddenly the goats are like. They've yeah, been the co- going to the gym and you yeah. know, the, the troll is like, I'm sorry. Yeah, the goats got shredded and the, 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 the troll peaked on turn four, really. <laughs> we'll just call you the goat avenger, Cameron. Thank you. I. It was a seriously strategic play, playing Archon on, on curve. Play, playing the mythic rare that you probably yep. presumably first picked. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, it, there was a lot of in and outs to that strategy, but I managed to hit my land drops and played my bomb on six. With it being a human draft, I actually uh, very rarely ran into the the mill deck because, hmm. um, of course, that was this. For those who missed it, uh, the first time Eldraine was around, like during Eldraine's actual release on Arena, it was before there was human drafts on Arena, and the problem with the bot drafts was that the bots just like didn't know that the mill deck was possible mm-hmm. and so you could get like five merfolk secret keepers very easily mm-hmm. and then the games were just like secret keeper or like mill you four mill you four run away together mill you four mill you four like it was it was pain it was mm-hmm. pain yeah um, it was no fun <clears throat> yeah but this no this was interesting i had a really fun uh white black knights deck mm-hmm. uh that was just sort of neat um yeah. Adam and I on Lure MTG drafted a, a green white adventures deck. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That was story the, time. That would that did okay. We did okay. Did you get the clover? No, oh. we didn't get. The I know clover. Adam loves Lucky Clover. Yeah, mm. we only saw it when in our first draft, which we went sort of medium mono red. Mm. We went like five and three and four and three. We did okay. I for, I forgotten how much I remembered about that format because I was like I don't remember anything about this format I like can't like because like it came out sort of the end of 2019 the arena experience wasn't great then the pandemic happened and then I spent mm. a long time playing Animal Crossing mm. so I wasn't playing a lot of Eldraine um, sort of and stuff like that and then. Um, but yeah, um, we got we opened up the draft and and I was like, oh yeah, the tra bucket. Yep, I do oh, remember this bucket. format. The bucket, bucket, get bucketed. Bucket. Also, I love the art on Lucky Clover. You can tell that John Stenko was classically trained because he probably spent a lot of time studying hands. Mm. Mm. And by God, he's going to use them. <laughs> yeah. Also, those cuffs, very good cloth drapery. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and like there's like chain mail on them as well. It's like very detailed. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Dang. Oh yeah, brimstone trebuchet. Right, yes, two in a red, one, three, defender, reach. Don't forget it has reach. Mm. Taps we to didn't. ping an opponent. And then whenever a knight enters the battlefield, you can untap the the uh, the, as, the trebuchet. As the horse loads the bucket. Mm-hmm. We definitely, definitely <clears throat> got somebody with bucket. Mm. In my white, black knight stack, I got a very, very late, like, table, irresponsibly late, circle of loyalty. Which is mm. the the it's it's the white mythic from the cycle that the green one is the great henge mm. right 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 so it's like it's it's something white white but it's generic mana cheaper for every creature or power I can't remember it gets cheaper uh, it makes all your it's an anthem makes all your creatures plus one plus one whenever Seems you good. cast a legendary something happens but it uh, that doesn't really come up and then three and a white and uh, tap it for make a two two knight. Which is a three three knight with vigilance because it's it gives it gives it plus one plus one. That hmm. seems very good. <clears throat> yeah, circle of loyalty is a it's yeah it's it's the uh, it's the round table right. That's, yeah. that's what the that's the yeah. joke there. Yeah, seems like a beating and a half. Yeah, but it's, it's mm, a good one. bucketing I, people in the mouth must feel great. Yeah, it was very good. Right, so it's one it's four white white. Thank you, Paul. One cheaper for every knight you control whenever you oh whenever you cast a legendary you also make a knight okay so mm-hmm. it, it just makes knights you can get them for free if you cast a legendary but that wasn't really what my deck was doing anyway uh bro bro bro, bro. 
You know how Eldraine's all like, fairy tales. Bro is like, death. Yes. It's yeah. like a in the trenches war set. There's been a lot of uh, the fictions come out already. Yeah, the fiction's all out. I it mean, it's very good. It's based on, it's funny because it's, this is, <laughs> this is like Street Fighter, the movie, the game. Because hmm. mm-hmm. this is, the magic set based on the novel, based on Magic the well, Gathering. I would not say that Magic set is entirely based on the novel. It's I not. I have a little bit of insight to this, because as I've told everyone, I worked on the creative text team, which does not mean I designed cards. It does not mean I made any of these cards. I just took the designs that the very talented game designers mm-hmm. and play testers came up with, and then tried to figure out what flavor text and names to put on them, and submitted my takes, and some of them got picked. So how would how much would you say then is based on the novel? Well, the novel is like a ref, like a big reference for us. Like everybody on the creative text team read the novel and stuff mm. like that, um, because you know. But this was this is more like a, what if we take this actually because the novel is sort of based on antiquities as well, right? Mm-hmm. There's the antiquity set, so it's like it's based on antiquities and it's based on the novel, but it's like a little bit of updating and maybe some characters got a little bit more agency and a little bit more. T- time to shine and like maybe our you know we got some more well-defined characters mm. and stuff out of that as well some more practical clothing <laughs> yeah yeah for Ashnod and Dra- Hercule. Uh, Hercule and mm. and all of that but you also get some really deep cut characters like Harbin and Drafna that were like mentioned in the novel mm. but like never showed up in then ant- antiquities or anything like I'm, that I'm super amped for Ashnod Ashnod's cool like a sacrificial uh artifact commander mm-hmm. sick mm-hmm. um also, I really want to know more about, um, in Antiquities, there was a card that I really liked called Yoshian Soldier. Yes. Mm, which was just a 1-3 with Vigilance artifact creature, and its flavor text said something like, after the defenders of some city returned from campaign to find their city burned to the ground, you know, Urza vowed that his allies would never want for something again. Yeah. And, you know, it was just no reference to that ever again. But maybe we would get more of it. I don't have the the art isn't like readily available on Scryfall yet. But during the stream yesterday, they showed off a artifact creature or artifact soldier. They showed off an artifact token uh, that looked just like the the art for a Yoshin soldier. Cool. And I was just like, oh, I did. The, I did. The, yeah. The, the 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 thing. The Ooh. thing I recognized. Yeah. So that was fun. Um. So yeah. The Brothers War. The Brothers, Urza and Mishra. We heard you liked the Brothers, so let's make Brothers, uh, specifically many iterations of them. Mm. So there's kind of four different iterations of each of those characters in the set. So I I don't know. Let's look at them. Let's start with Urza, Power Stone Prodigy. This is the youngest youngest Urza. so if you don't know, I'm gonna I'm just Please. gonna chime in, chime in with some background here. Please. Mm. Urza and Mishra are brothers. Mm-hmm. They are orphans because their their mom dies and their dad marries someone else and they get disinherited. Oh. Um, so they are, but their dad has some money and a little bit of power. So instead of just basically being forced to abandon his kids, he apprentices them to somebody named Tocasia, where she mm. works out in the desert and she is digging up the relics of the Thran. And if you're mm. like that, Thran sounds familiar. Yes, that's yeah. where Glacian and Yogmoth and all those people in the original Phyrexians, they were in that area, but they died out thousands of years ago. And what they're doing is they're excavating around the caves of Koilo sort of area. They eventually get into there and they're finding all of these old abandoned Thran artifacts and machinery and power stones. I'm a big fan of their dynamo. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's so they're digging up these ancient relics from this old civilization. And then, you know, there's this bit there's so there's this bit where they're like, they don't really know who the Thran are because they never see any like bodies. They Mm -hmm. just have all of the they just have all of like the machines and stuff like that. So in the books, the Thran are a very mysterious race and they don't know Mm. what they look like or anything like that. So when you see like, that's what that means. Cool. Thank you. So I'm helping. Urza, Power Stone Prodigy. Uh, Two and a blue, legendary human artificer. One, three with vigilance. Uh, One and tap, draw a card, discard a card. And then whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, create a tapped Power Stone token. 
This ability triggers only once each turn. And we know from the single time that Power Stones show up in Dominaria United that they're an uh, artifact that taps for a colorless mana and it can't be spent on a non-artifact spell. Hmm. But it can be spent for any other use. So extra costs, um, artifact spells, obviously. Hmm. But like, you know... Um, <clears throat> filtering i suppose yeah abilities. Hmm? abilities abilities yeah yeah exactly um also i love this is my favorite power toughness and keyword one three vigilance yeah yeah one mm-hmm. three vigilance with tap with a tap ability of mm-hmm. some kind i'm like yes i'm on board with it i love it um and the fact that he is a looter yes yeah well because he's out in the desert digging up weird yeah. cool old digging stuff fran bits yeah no it's 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 cool. I like yeah. it. I like this card a lot. There's a lot of coordination between the story and the design of this card, mm-hmm. the design of the cards in this set. So he grows up a little more, and he becomes Urza, Prince of Krug. Now, what's Krug? Please, I actually don't know. Okay, so okay, the uh, Krug <clears throat> is the capital city of Yosha. Oh, oh. Okay, and so he becomes Prince of Krug by marrying Kylabin Krug. Uh, who's the princess of Yosha. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the book, uh, they're like, you know, we need to find you a husband, but none of the suitors are 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 good enough for you because Kyla is very smart and very capable. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of like the book is a little bit like old fashioned in that. It's just like sort of in the book, Kyla is a bit of a uh, one note character who sort of gets married to Urza and then has to deal with him being an idiot. Um mm-hmm. She gets a little bit of an update. Um, she's the person. So whenever you see any magic cards that have flavor text that say that have like a description of what happens, and then like it's credited to the Antiquities War. Yeah, Kyla wrote, wrote the Antiquities the, okay. War. Okay, oh. so she is a she is a scholar, and she was the person who rebuilt after everything went to hell. Okay. Um, okay. However, so so she is they her dad's like we need to find you a husband. She's like none of these people are good enough for me. So he puts out this huge thing, this huge lump of rock and says any man who can move this rock can marry Kyla and she's like ugh. Um and so Urza being really smart uh makes a robot ah. to move the rock and then beca- marries Kyla, becomes uh the prince of Krug. Uh, because Krug is the capital city, and where it says the prince was happy to let Yosha's coffers fund his extravagant research. So for the ah. first few years, he's married. Basically, he's not a great husband, and is just basically he marries her to get his hand, not because he's super interested in becoming prince of Krug, but because her dowry includes a very exciting artifact text that's been pulled from the desert that has Wait. old designs, wow. so- like Thran machinery on it. Urza's embezzling public funds in order to fund private research. Well, no, because he's doing the, it. He's he's becomes the he becomes the the chief the, the artificer of Krug. Oh, that's so only it, the very beginning of the bad things Urza's done. Yeah, yeah, it's but like he, <laughs> he makes it like all of those Yoshin soldiers and stuff like that. He makes all that stuff. Right? Okay, like based okay, on cool. his designs. Hmm, so yeah. so you know he's going around. And they're like he's some sort of legendary genius with machines. Hmm. Because he apprenticed under Tokasia, so yeah, let's give him money and he can make soldiers and other cool things and stuff right. like that okay. for us. Cool. I just like the idea that Urza's like, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cut funding to school lunches. <laughs> yeah, I got to... I got to keep building his robots. Yeah. yeah. So Urza, Prince of Krug, is uh, two white blue for a two three legendary human artificer. Artifact creatures you control get plus two plus two. Nice. And for six mana, create a token that is a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 soldier creature in addition to its other types. So that can... doesn't tap him. Nope. And he can So he can turn any random artifact you have into also it's a 3-3 three, three soldier. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Well, yeah, it's, well, it's a 1-1, yeah. one, one, but then he gives it plus 2, plus 2. So, yeah. Uh, real quick, before we move on to the next Urza, let's take another look back at Queen Kyla Bin Krug that we saw briefly there, who does have her own card as well. Also a 2-3, one red-white for a legendary human noble. Four and tap. Discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards. You may choose an artifact or creature with mana value 1 you discarded this way, then do the same for artifact or creatures with mana values 2 and 3, Return those cards to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. So hang on. You pay for, tap, pitch your hand, and then if you discarded a one, a two, and a three, you just get those into play. 
or just a, maybe a one, right? Maybe, yeah. You know, yeah. You just get, you, it goes into play. Up to, you may choose, yeah. You don't have to, but you could just get three free cards. Yes. Neat. Yeah. Wow. Also, I really love this mode she of clever. Um, Boros. Uh, Boros's color identity also having to do with history and, um, mm. uh, you know, kind of passion for knowledge, mm -hmm. um, which was, we last saw really in Strixhaven. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, then, uh, following Urza's life, the next one we have is Urza, Lord Protector. One white blue for a two four legendary human artificer. Uh, and he's got a funny little symbol up in the top left of his card, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, artifact, instant, and sorcery spells you cast cost one generic mana less. And for seven mana, if you both own and control Urza Lord Protector and an artifact named the Might Stone and Weak Stone, exile them, then meld them into Urza Planeswalker, activate only as a sorcery. So yeah. What, what'd you do to Krug, Urza? It's not looking so hot. Why? Urza, Urza did not blow up Krug. Mishra did. Uh-huh. Okay, so... so, so Lord this is Protector is kind of an aspirational title, I'm guessing well, here. Well, okay, so so I gotta... How much lore do you guys want to know Bring to understand it on. what's yeah, happening? Yeah, please. I'm okay. fascinated. So if we sort of rewind a little bit, um, could you actually bring up something called the Might Stone and the Weak Stone? Well, I was going to ask to look at that before we look at the melded card. Okay, yeah. perfect. So we got the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. What those are are some... That's Glacian's Power Stone. Do you remember who Glacian is? Doesn't matter. We don't. We're, we don't need to go that far back. But it's, one of Yogmoth's contemporaries. Uh, yes, and sort of Yogmoth's enemy. Oh. All right. Um, so anyhow, uh, the the Glacian's Power Stone uh, is found by Urza and Mishra. They find it, and then it breaks apart into two pieces. One of which becomes the Might Stone, which Urza gets, and one of which becomes the Weak Stone, which Mishra gets. The mm. Might Stone allows him to power up artifacts, which is how he is able to make these incredible, powerful soldiers. Hmm. The weak stone sounds like it's worse, but it allows uh, Mishra to subjugate and control ancient Thran artifacts, such as their oh. Phyrexian dragon engines. Oh, fuck. So, so, so Mishra, through his control, can control these dragon engines. There's and actually a card that has been spoiled for, called Splitting the Power Stone. Yes. That... that it illustrates this particular moment. It's kind of an important moment. So there's there it is coming apart. You can see Urza's face is on his half, Mishra's face is on his half, but they both covet their each other's stone, right? right? Because, you know, the, they're both really cool and useful. Right. Uh, so one half kind of um, is like the security key and the other half is the power source? Kind of, yeah. Okay. So, but what happens is uh, they get into a bit of a fight mm -hmm. over this and... Um, what happened a, is a bit of a tiff. A bit of a tiff. <laughs> they have a big magical fight with the stones, and they accidentally kill Takasia, which oh. is really tragic because, like, they're not very old at the time. She's the closest thing they still have to a parent. You know, like it's pretty bad. So Urza leaves and goes to Yosha and apprentices to a clockmaker, mm -hmm. um, which is how he meets. It's uh, too many details. And Mishra is feels really bad about this because he's the much more emotional person. I think he mm -hmm. takes it more personally and feels like more responsible mm -hmm. for her death, whereas like Urza's like crushed, but is just sort of goes off. But Mitra runs out into the desert where he's found by this uh, by the Falaji, which is a a race of like nomadic desert people. Uh, and uh, at first things don't go so well for him, but then they realize that he has the power to, one, that he's super smart. So he starts apprenticing the Falaji leader's son and like acting as his tutor. Mm -hmm. So he gets out of, you know, being like at the bottom of the social ladder there. And two, that they realize he can control these dragon engines. So eventually when the, the leader of the Falaji is killed and his son takes over and then the son is killed, Mishra then becomes the leader of the Falaji. And the Falaji have always been fighting with the Yoshans and the Corlysians and the Argivians over this contested area mm -hmm. called the either the Sawadi Marshes or the Sword Marches, depending uh, on which, which side, side it is. Uh, right. It might be the it might be the Sawadi marches and the sword marches, but the, the point being, uh, mm -hmm. and so they get into these fights, and you know eventually, like it starts to come to a head, and they you know they organize a meeting between the two sides to see if they can negotiate peace, and of course, who shows up but Mishra in charge of 
the uh, in front of the in charge of the Falaji and Urza on the side of Krug. And instead of being like, my brother, I haven't seen you in so many years. Mm -hmm. This is finally a chance to, you know, maybe talk things through and not use these two enormous armies as, as proxies for our own personal beef. They decide that they're going to have a huge fight and negotiations go poorly and eventually Krug gets sacked. Like mm. Mishra destroys Krug. Hmm. As, so he is. So Urz is legitimately trying to protect Krug here. Well, at this point, this is like way later. Yeah. Where yeah. Uh, so uh, I've, uh, Krug's been raised many years ago at this point, but oh, okay. like they this this fight then basically ruins mm -hmm. the entire continent. Right. Like mm -hmm. every country gets strip mined and destroyed, but like you know the people there's you know some sides are ally with the with the, the sort of the alliance of Yosha. Um, uh, Corliss and Argive and some of them ally with the Falaji and because neither side is purely good and neither side is purely bad and everyone's got their points right remember this guy Traxos yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah 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 Scourge Krug so we can go back to the Might Stone of the Weak Stone again for a second so this is a five mana legendary artifact Power Stone also uh, and when the Might Stone and Weak Stone enter the battlefield choose one Either draw two cards, or target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Also, it taps for two colorless mana, and it can't be used to cast non-artifact spells. That seems very cool. So Meld, you may or may not remember from, uh, gosh, uh, Eldritch Moon. Yeah, Eldritch Moon. Yeah. Which is, uh, I can't remember what card game this was from originally, but it's basically, you take two cards and you make it into one big card. So Urza Lord Protector and the Might Stone and the Weak Stone are double-faced cards, on the back of which is half of one enormous card. So if you have them both in play and you pay the seven mana to activate Urza Lord Protector's ability, they transform into Urza Planeswalker, who, because the card is enormous, they can put more abilities on him. Hmm. So, seven loyalty... Static ability. Once during each of your turns, you may activate an additional loyalty ability of Urza Planeswalker. <laughs> uh, you can activate, the, you may activate the same ability twice. Plus two. Artifact, instant, and sorcery spells you cast this turn cost two less to cast, and you just gain two life. Plus one. Draw two cards and discard one card. Zero. Create two one one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Minus three, exile target non-land permanent. You can do that twice because mm -hmm. he's got seven loyalty. Or minus 10, artifacts and planeswalkers you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Destroy all non-land permanents. Huh. So. So you'll notice oofa. that Urza has, uh, his, Urza's eyes are glowing and they look a lot like the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Because what happens is when he, basically, things come to a head with Mishra, and I'll sort of explain that when we get to the, the when, we get to Mishra, when we get to the Mishra cards. But basically what happens is Urza detonates, and you can see he's holding it when he's like Lord Protector, which mm -hmm. is a title he gets in the book, even though like it's kind of ironic, honestly. He's holding this big, the Silex, which yeah. we've seen mm -hmm. Karn Silex, Good Soup. Yep. We've seen the Golgothan Silex, which is a very old card. Um, so he's holding the Silex and he uh, detonates it to 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 blow up everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ex in the subsequent explosion, he merges with the Might Stone and the Weak Stone, and they become his eyes, and he becomes the uh, the first Planeswalker, essentially. Wow! Back when the Planeswalkers were uh, overpowered, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 he becomes a he becomes a godlike power. Mm -hmm. So. You can do this on your second turn with him. Yeah. Yeah, he ultimates on turn two, on like the second turn he's in play. Yeah, because yeah. he goes to 11 yeah. if you gain four life. <laughs> or just 10 if yep. you draw two cards and activate <clears throat> his other ability. And then the next turn, you can just draw two cards, then ultimate him, and he sticks around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, no, he's extremely powerful. Wow. Okay. But I mean, it's like he is supposed to be one of the most yeah. powerful beings to ever live in the magic universe, mm -hmm. possibly yeah. the most. So it kind of, I, I'm Meld, here for Meld it. Meld makes sense for this sort of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we rewind all the way back to when Urza was mucking about with power stones in the desert. Yeah, his uh, younger brother Mishra. Mishra was also doing stuff in the desert. So Mishra excavation prodigy, not power stone prodigy, excavation prodigy. Yeah, Mishra was always better at the hands-on stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. is two and a red for a legendary human artificer. A 2-1 with haste. 
And for one and tap, discard a card, draw a card. <gasps> so Urza gets to loot. Mishra gets to rummage. I love it. Whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, add red, red. This ability triggers only once each turn. Mishra also gets flavor text, which Urza had too much text for. While Urza read books, Mishra learned to read the desert itself. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that. 2-1 mm -hmm. with haste, so you can activate that ability right away. I like that it's rummage instead of loot. I like that. Yeah. This Putting yeah. things in the bin is super, like, um, useful mm -hmm. in yeah. this set. Works well with, like, goblin welders. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So as he grows up and starts hanging out with the, well, again, the Falaji, the, the he becomes Mishra, tamer of Makfawa. So the Makfawa is the Falaji word for dragon engine. That's what I assumed. Mm. I was going to ask you that. Great. Okay, cool. So uh, three black red, Urza gained some white mana. Mm -hmm. Mishra gained the black mana and a big sword. Uh, so three black red for a 4-4. Four, four. Legendary human artificer. Permanents you control. All permanents have ward sacrifice a permanent. <laughs> and each artifact in your graveyard has unearth for one black red. Uh, by the way, unearth is back as a mechanic in this set. But That's sick. Each artifact has unearth for that cost. A reminder, unearth is return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste and you exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Or if it would leave the battlefield and you can only unearth as a sorcery. How you thinking, uh, Cam? I saw your, uh, you have the happy face. I'm excited by this. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, hmm. And they can be, uh, I mean, it's legendary, but it's not like a planeswalker where the name is part of the type. No, you right? can have both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, you can have the excavator, uh, Mishra the excavator, yes. just uh, throwing stuff into your bin. Mm -hmm. And then this guy's pulling him back. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. a, a bottomless sack outlet mm -hmm. a free sack outlet is real nice in any aristocrat strategy mm. uh, because the ones you pay for oh they suck mm -hmm. um being able to protect your important pieces um and oh and it's mm. permanence you control which yeah, you permanence. Count, it counts mishra himself. yeah and sacrifice a permanent right so you can sacrifice basics Mm -hmm. You can sacrifice, I don't know, clue tokens, power stone tokens. Um, right. I guess you can just sacrifice it to activate the ward, even if you don't want to do anything. Yeah. Ward doesn't trigger if you target your stuff, though. No. Ward, ward's only if your opponent targets your stuff. Yeah, but you can you can still ward something mm. when you feel like it. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So I, there is also, if we want some flavor text, there's also this version. Oh yeah, right. There's the 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 borderless um, versions of these uh, with the brothers with the brotherhood of Gix whispering in his ear. Mishra's drive to prove himself was slowly twisted into an insatiable hunger for power, according to the Antiquities War, which uh, Kyla wrote. Kyla wrote. Yeah. Um, so who's the brotherhood of Gix? Do you know who that is? No, Do you no, know who I, Gix I know the is? I know the priest of Gix. I'm familiar with Gix. All right, so Gix is a Phyrexian praetor nightmare being, um, and uh, so he uh, Gix gets a card now. By the way, yeah, finally we finally get to see Gix on a card. Let me just read this real quick before you tell me more about Gix, just because okay. this card slaps. One black black for a three three Phyrexian praetor. Cool. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents. Its controller may pay one life if they do draw a card. So in a 1v1 game, if I hit you, I get to pay a life and draw a card. Cool. Four black, black, black. Listen to this. F sorry, part of the cost is it's four black, 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 discard X cards. Exile the top X cards of target opponent's library. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. So you can just... You pay seven mana, but you just pitch mm, five, six cards. You just get to look at the top six of their library and cast stuff for free. Yeah. Miserable. Also, you can pay for this with power stones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, tell me more about this horrible being. Okay, so Gix is a horrible Phyrexian, uh, and he uh, starts whispering. He starts, like, he can't quite come through back from Phyrexia to Dominaria, but he, uh, like, a bunch of people are able to, like, sort of, he sort of, like, gets in touch with people psychically, and then he has all these disciples, and then they're all just like, oh, yes, 
Yes, being Phyrexian is the true way. Mm. No suffering, no pain, free from ailments. Like, it's kind of like the Yawgmoth pitch, right? Like, you know, right. your bodies are broken and you're oppressed, so this is, you know, <laughs> glorious freedom. Yeah. Uh, and so then they're basically, and the Brotherhood of Gix sort of insinuates themselves into Mishra's court. Uh, 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 and the Falaji throne, essentially. Mm. And uh, Mishra slowly gets like completely like twisted by Gix through like this long distance, very slow um, in influence. So, so yeah. is this uh, is Gix the sort of Praetor, uh, and the the like the the five Praetors that are on New Phyrexia Yeah, are sort of the new version of like. Gix was Praetor before. Yes. On on, on original Phyrexia, and now on new on new Phyrexia, we've got mm. Elish Norn and all these guys. Yes. As like the the new version of that. Mm. Mm -hmm. So then Mishra becomes the next next iteration of the card is Mishra claimed by Gix. Yes. Because yeah. at, at, at some point, like, and at some point, because, like, you notice that Urza is looking quite old in his last yeah. card. At some point, Mishra but like, Mishra has lived a hard life. He lives out in the desert. He yeah. was, he was, like, he's been digging up and, like, doing physical things, like, his whole life and his body. So he right. starts to get old, right? Right, right, And right. so he starts doing, like, the, basically all the Gixians in his court start convincing him that, you know, if you want to be young and strong forever, you can just replace all your aging body parts the same way we do. Right. There's no problems with it. That nothing yeah. ever goes wrong when you use all this Phyrexian right. technology on your own body. Mm. And it completely, like, basically at the end of it, there's no Mishra left. He's just a Phyrexian. Right. Right. Wearing, right. wearing Mishra's face. Right. Yeah. The, the, the ship of Theseus. Yeah. Um, only, you know, m very early on, the Mishra yeah. personality uh, dis like disintegrated. Yeah. yeah. He complete. And then there's this big climactic scene at the end of the novel. Which I think we'll get to in just a moment. We'll get to, yeah. Uh, so Mishra claimed by Gix is two black red for a three five Phyrexian human artificer. Yeah. See all those Whoa. bits that aren't people yeah. bits anymore. Yeah. Uh, whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Very cool. If and then if Mishra claimed by Gix and a creature named Phyrexian Dragon Engine are attacking, and you both own and control them. Exile them and meld them into Mishra lost to Phyrexia and enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. Real quick before we see that, let's take a quick look see at the Phyrexian Dragon Engine. Mm. It's a three mana two two, which doesn't sound that scary. Mm. Uh, it's got first or sorry, it's got yeah. double strike. Not much of a dragon though, really. <laughs> There's dragony bits, I guess maybe sort of in the. Uh, it's just a two two dragon. Yeah, it's, 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 a, very it's a little dragon, disappointing. Yeah. When Phyrexian Dragon Engine enters the battlefield from your graveyard. You may discard your hand if you do draw three cards, which That's is great good. if you have no cards in your hand. Yeah. And unearth for three red red, which is awesome because, you know, you can just get it back and then do the meldy thing. And mm -hmm. then... can, can you? Because, or does the unearth clause replace, because it exiles. I assume they want it to work like that. I, yeah, I assume they, I assume I assume they can... want it to work. Like, you know, you can unearth it. I think it's a it situation of where like, it probably the layers work out that it's already melded before or it exiles before the or it unearthed the battlefield clause would make it exile well, right because it's not I guess it's not leaving the battlefield really it's transforming yeah well, it does say exile them then meld them I don't know I, I, but I, but I, the like, the unearth clause is if it would leave the battlefield you exile it yeah so I assume that they want it to work I'm sure that by the rules it this this works yeah. but anyway uh three mana. Three mana colorless two two double strike, with with all the other stuff. This card's sweet. Yeah, I just pick it. by the way, just yeah, like, this seems very powerful. Yeah, I'm, I'm I would easily pick this in draft. Yeah. It's 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 not a situation of where like, well, I don't know if I don't get Mishra, how good is it? It's good. Yeah, yeah. like the weak stone, the power stone is also is also pickup. also good. Yeah, yeah. It's a removal spell. It's a yeah. removal spell, and then it makes you mana. Yeah, yeah. So then. They meld together into not a planeswalker because Urza was the planeswalker, but into Mishra lost to Phyrexia. He's fused with the dragon and he literally melded with with the dragon engine into a legendary artifact creature, Phyrexian artificer. No longer human. Nope. There's nothing human left about Mishra now. No, no. He's... Nine nine. Yeah. Uh, whenever Mishra lost to Phyrexia enters the battlefield because that you do exile and then re-enter melded, so. You get to do this right away. Or attacks. Choose three. <laughs> uh, target opponent discards two cards. 
Mishra deals three damage to any target. Destroy target artifact or planeswalker. Creatures you control gain menace and trample until end of turn. Creatures you don't control gain minus one, minus one until end of turn. Create two tapped power stone tokens. So uh, Mark actually was talking in the reveal for this about, he was like, he was talking about charms, which was pick three, choose one. Mm -hmm. And then commands, which are, or sorry, not pick three. Charms are three modes, choose one. Mm -hmm. Commands are four modes, choose two. And... I, I don't I, I think that's sort of the upper limit and he says that they've they've never been able to do six modes choose three just because of physical space in the rules box right and with meld you can yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so yeah there's nothing left of Mishra here hey no so basically there's this big epic epic confrontation at the end of the book um and by the way at the end of the book this is like uh, uh, the I'll wait. I'll finish this, and I'll get to my other thing. Okay. At the end of the book, there's this big epic confrontation, and they're just like, and then Urza kind of realizes that that the Phyrexians have completely destroyed his brother. There's nothing left. He's completely. super bummed out. Yeah, they've yeah, com- yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's got and he gets the si- he gets the Silex from Thanos. Um, I'll explain what's going on there in just a second. Uh, and I'm a big fan of that candelabra. Yeah, and he and he's like, all right. Uh, and he, he sort of rebuffs his brother and his brother gets so furious and so angry and there's no brother left really, but he's so like, he's just con- completely consumed by rage. Urza just manages to like push him down a hill mm. and get him away from him. Very Doctor Who like, he say. falls down a big hill yep. and then he comes back over the hill and he's just, he literally, he sort of like maniacally laughing and grinning with like literally his face hanging off and just like this gleaming metal skull underneath this is all described in loving detail in the Ooh. book is like has basically stapled himself to the bottom of the dragon engine or he's mm-hmm. like put himself on top of the dragon engine he's like all right i'm gonna finally kill you and he's just completely insane so right. that's when urs is like well Got no choice. Time to set off the Silex because this is not going to stop even if I die at this point. He's right. not controllable anymore. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking of the. Um, it's hardcore, we'll yeah. say. Thinking of the Mechanicus copy, copy pasta, mm. um, Warhammer 40K oh. video game called Mechanicus, and there's an opening speech, which, you know, is about the weakness of the flesh and claiming the certainty of. of of metal yeah yep very kind of similar to that yeah Um, i claim the strength i i crave the strength and certainty of steel yeah now can you activate one mode multiple times no because then it it would say that yeah yeah Yeah. so it's choose three but still i don't know powerful stuff destroy target artifact or planeswalker gain menace and trample Three damage, like God, like yeah, this yeah, is all I don't very know. powerful. Like blightning with a nine nine plus something else. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's... he doesn't have trample or anything. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean it is nice that both Urza and Mishra have one shot kills for each other. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Exile but... target non land permanent and exile creature or planeswalker. Yep. I think Urza is going to have a hard time. Like I think Mishra is going to have a hard time here, though. Right. Yeah. Like playing Mishra, then playing the dragon engine. And Urza can just double exile both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did right. I mean Urza? Like you have to do it in one turn. Cause, no, because Urza can, uh, uh, can do two thing, two of the yeah. same thing. Yeah. yeah. So he can. Yeah. So he can exile both of Mishra's cards. Right. Yeah. You would have to do it both in one turn. Urza w- w- wins. Yes, he does. Air quotes. Yeah. Well, he blows up Mishra. And the Silex hits the Silex off yeah. and starts, and uh, the the dis- the blast is so ruinous uh, that uh, oh that ru- uh, sh- yeah, and Urza's ruinous blast yeah right. There's a card for that. Also, I assume the the fragments of pottery we see on Urza's planeswalker card is the Silex. I guess so. Probably, mm. maybe shrapnel. Or just like the lands around him that he completely like he completely changes. He like blows up an entire island. The coastline changes. Like mm. it like literally is like. Is, isn't that what what why Ice Age happens? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it uh, there's so much. I presumably I don't know if they ever like get into the explanation because that's kind of the end of the book. But presumably there's so much dust and dirt in the air from literally like decimating Argoth and stuff like that. It just like you know changes the climate for yeah, hundreds it, of years on Dominaria. Yeah, the antiqu- uh, a nuclear winter. Yeah, mm-hmm. essentially, is yeah. what you get. 
It's pretty miserable for everyone left behind, like Kyla Bing Krug, <laughs> Nerza's long-suffering wife, mm-hmm. who is, if you read the new magic story, is just like, <laughs> that, <laughs> and the, you know what? She's a le- she t- mm. well-deserved. Mm-hmm. The flavor text on this version of Urza's Ruinous Blast posits or positions it as vengeance. Centuries ago, one man's vengeance plunged the world into ice and darkness. But which man's? Well, I was going to say, like, it was like, yeah, but also... Well, they both wanted to kill each other a lot. Yeah, yeah but also, first... if Urza hadn't done that, surely just the Phyrexians would have taken over all of Dominaria. Yeah, but I don't think that Urza gets a pass here just because oh, the Phyrexians are bad. Oh, oh. I was not giving Urza a pass. Yeah. Urza, they're both bad men. They're both very bad men. Yeah. Um, on the on the in, on the bright side, so you know Gix is around in the book. Mm. Gix and Ashnod mm-hmm. have a, have like cuz Ashnod figures out what go, what is going on mm-hmm. and has like a big like face turn, I guess to use wrestling terminology mm-hmm. at the end of the book oh. and is just like, "Here, I've got this magical silex that we looted from the third path. I'll get it if that's not for this podcast. Um, and she gives it to Tano, so Tano can give it to Urza. Ashnod tells him how to use it, and Ashnod then goes and like um, fights Gix mm. to uh, to buy time for to to set off the Silex, essentially. And so in the book, it seems like maybe Ashnod loses, but you never see her die. So I'm hoping that she comes back. Uh, that Ashnod's still around afterwards. This is now a justice for Ashnod podcast. I I think that Ashnod gets kind of a short thrift in the book because, you know, she's she, uh, in the book. She's a very sort of one dimensional psychopathic character who like I love cuts, the torture. Up, cuts up war criminals and turns them into her zombie soldiers and stuff like that. Um, you know, but in the in I feel like I personally was trying to like whatever I would write and suggest flavor text for Ashnod. I was like, I had her experimenting on corpses of people who were already dead, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's just try to like give her a little bit more of a variety to her character other than horrible sociopath. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like the women in that book don't get a lot to do, honestly. Like mm. you have Ashnod, who's a, well, instrumental, but awful. And then you have Kyla, who just kind of sits there and then has to, Constantly clean up Urza's messes. And then, uh, oh, uh, what's her name? The, Urkel. The mother figure. Oh. Oh, Tokasia, who gets Tukasia. killed. Yeah, and then, yeah. Sh- Shirakul, who never actually really gets any, like, words in the book. You just meet <laughs> right. you just meet her husband, Drafna, even though it's Hercule who comes up with all of the magic and all of the good stuff. Right. But and she's the, shy in the book. In the recall. Actually, here's, by the way, Hercule, Master Wizard new card for the set one blue blue for a two four legendary human wizard advisor at the beginning of your end step if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn reveal the top five cards for your library for each card type among non-creature spells that you've cast this turn you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order uh that seems uh, pretty cool yeah so you know if you just cast you know a sorcery and yeah. an artifact yeah. Mm-hmm. A non creature artifact. And you look at the top five cards of your library, you just get to put a sorcery and an artifact from them in your hand. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I will I will also point out that in dot in the history of this set, Hercule is the person who comes up with like her like literally invents how to do magic on Dominaria. There's no magic on Dominaria before this point. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh. Like she's talking about like pulling the energy of like the of the of the ether essentially like that. And that this is all her developments. Cool. What is Justice I, for Hercule. By the way, uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be, if you recall, yes. last depiction of Hercule. Yeah, Ugh. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Christ. And then there's the there, the one card Ashnod oh, got before. Look at the, the flavor text in this one. This spell, attributed to Drafna, was actually the worf, work of his wife Hercule. Yes. Hmm. Uh, uh. And there's also, this one's got some good... Hercule's research at the College of Latinam wasn't enough to stop the two brothers, but for centuries thereafter, her spellcraft taught artificers restraint. Very nice. Mm. It's a good card. There's been a long, oh, it's, it's been a long um, justice for Hercule yeah. campaign going on at Wizards headquarters. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this is, I'm pretty sure Hercule's recall is a vintage staple. Yeah. Right, because you're like, mox, mox, mox. Hercule's recall, mox, mox, mox. Storm. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk briefly about a couple of their mythics, actually, because um, there's a third meld card in the set. Much like Eldritch Moon, there's only three meld cards, because 
uh, one meld card takes two cards. So three meld cards is six cards in the set. Mm -hmm. It would sort of get out of hand if you did too many of them. Anyway, so let's start with uh, Titania, pardon me, Voice of Gaia. Mm -hmm. So one green green for a three four legendary elemental. That has reach? (laughs) With reach, yeah. Look out for that. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain two life. Hmm. Neat. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania, Voice of Gaia, and a land named Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, exile them and meld them into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. So Titania is uh, the sort of the the leader of the people or the the, the creatures, the dryads and she and, speak for the trees yeah she's basically <laughs> the lorax of argos which is the last unspoiled island uh near which is the last unspoiled area after you know 40 years or whatever of horrible drag out trench warfare against mishra and urza and uh Gix sort of like maneuvers it that they both discover that this land which is normally completely inaccessible due to like storms and and um, waves and like thick fog and stuff like that. They discover at the same time because Gix oh. is trying to play both sides off one another. Um, and so basically there's this huge rush to see who can pillage the fastest. And then Argoth gets exploded by the Silex. Correct. Neat. It's super bad. But so Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, the last unspoiled place on basically near, on this entire continent of Dominaria. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So it's a land. It, it's not legendary. Enters tapped unless you control a legendary green creature, which is an interesting clause I don't think I've ever seen before. Taps for a green, and for two green green and tap, make a bear! Bear! Mill three cards. Activate only as a sorcery. So they, you know, they synergize very well together. Uh, mm-hmm. Not the least of which is that they literally synergize into Titania, Gaia Incarnate. She's mad. So this is, I remember this from the thing yesterday, that basically Titania realizes, she's like, I'm, we're not going to live through this, so I'm going down swinging. Yeah, it? exactly. It's sort of what this is. I, I would say in the book, the poor Argothians get a little, they, they fight back a lot more in the set than they do in the book. So when I say mm. it's based on the book, but it's not exactly following the book, I feel like this gives it a little bit more balance for all sides. Good. Mm. Right? Like yeah. So Titania Gaia Incarnate is a star star legendary elemental avatar with vigilance, reach, trample, and haste. Love that. The, uh, her power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. And when she enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And also, for three and a green, put four plus one plus one counters on target land you control. It becomes a zero zero elemental with haste that is still a land. So well, I mean, as soon as you meld, you get to do that. If you got to go out, you go out like a Dark Souls boss. Yeah. So the the meld clause doesn't happen it happens at your upkeep but it doesn't happen unless you have four or more lands in your graveyard so uh however many lands you have in play when that happens she's going to be that many lands plus four larger Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's going to be very big it's very tall very very tall vigilance trample yeah yeah Everybody yeah. sucks. Well, no, nobody from Argoth sucks. There's like a Twitter thread like a while ago where like people were like, it's like if we had to have like a like a secret layer for like everybody who had beef with Urza, and it was just like I was, and I I chimed in with, could we could we also add literally the entire Isle of Argoth? And somebody's like, this is not gonna, this might need to be a set and not just a secret layer. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the majority of Dominaria, I think, has beef with Urza. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it got blow. Yeah. I do like that it's like Urza, Mishra are having this like, you know, I will destroy you. I will destroy you. Ah. Tajini is just like, uh, guys, could you do that like over there? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if Gerard had made it back, if Gerard had made it back, he would never have paid for a drink in his life yeah. again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Before we before we wrap up for the day, two more mythics. Let's talk about Teferi. 
because hmm. he's been he's going back in time to watch this whole thing. Yeah. Who's that planeswalker? It's, it's a fairy. It's without, a fairy. Without spoiling the story too much. So basically, they need they decide the modern day planeswalkers, the 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 Gatewatch decide that they need to destroy Phyrexia the same way that Urza did. They need a hmm. Silex, and luckily Sahili is extremely good at making big metal MacGuffins, and she makes them it. a Silex, and she makes them a thing that allows her to Kaya to team up and send Teferi's soul back through time. So he gets to watch all this. So we're sort of watching all this through Teferi's eyes, technically. Mm, So he's three blue blue for a four loyalty walker that has a static ability. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Mm. Uh, There was, the magic subreddit was joking because like someone jokingly called this like, I don't know. 10 months a year ago at some that's mm-hmm. at some point someone was like they're just at some point they're just gonna make it to fairy it's like whenever you draw a card put a loyalty counter on to fairy <laughs> well here he is yeah here yeah. he is uh, zero loyalty activated ability draw a card jokes on you it's actually a plus one but it's not a plus because you mm. zero and then you trigger yeah, a little bit of law counter on it yeah yeah minus two you make a two two blue spirit creature token with vigilance and whenever you draw a card put a plus one plus one counter on this creature Love it. Minus 12. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into its owner's library. So they get, to put, they get to save one thing in their hand and everything else gets shuffled back in. Yeah. Including I, all their land. Non-land. No, non-land. Okay, so they can recast their yes, thing. Yes, that would be backbreaking. I, I enjoy still how... Bad. This is pretty backbreaking. I like how Teferi's token... Ophidian's upside down. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I'm going to break faces and limit it. I don't know if it sees much play in Constructed. Five loyalty, or five mana. Yeah, five, it doesn't win the game immediately. I guess <laughs> this is a card that combo kills with a bunch of other things that already combo kill you. Yeah. Oh, okay. It seems pretty sweet, though. But yeah, like, it's a good card. Yeah. But I want to tell you about this next mythic, because you haven't actually seen this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a new ability. <gasps> so let's let's take a look at Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Mm. So it's a seven mana seven five with menace and lifelink. And the and ward pay life equal to Phyrexian Flesh Gorger's power. <laughs> now it also has this ability, prototype. Uh, you know, an earlier iteration, back when it was in in Alpha, right? Mm. The, not the magic set alpha. Don't worry about it. Anyway, prototype. You may cast this spell with a different mana cost color and size but it keeps its abilities and types so you can pay you see in the text box i love the way this is templated visually in the text box one black black for a three three so for three mana you get a three mana three three with menace and lifelink and ward pay life equal to its power which in that case is three so that's still extremely good busted but later you can pay seven seven colorless mana or you could pay the one black black and flicker it mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and then you just get get your seven five uh yeah this is very cool they were talking about i can't remember who actually they um mentioned specifically but they they were like they were trying to figure out how to make this work and then someone someone finally like templated it like this in the rules box and and everybody was like oh that's too cool not to use all right cool we'll do it that way hmm. so yeah also, I love the art in this. Yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. It looks mm-hmm. like a building coming at you. Yeah, and you're just like, I'm oh. going to die. Yep. Hopefully quickly. It yep. looks, yeah, I think it'd be pretty quick. It looks like it's all just like threshers and-, and Yeah, and, <laughs> uh, like Garzweilers. And yeah, like, just at the front of a worm. It just feels like there's, there's a tremendous sense of mass and speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah really great is. great art, Steve Prescott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do have to say I'm a, the naming all the Phyrexian stuff was fun. Oh, yeah. Or suggesting like big, gross, like I did not name Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I don't remember who did it, so I don't want to give credit. I'll look it up. Uh, but uh, Flesh Flesh Gorger is just like a very visceral yeah. name, I think. And it's just like, you know. Mm-hmm. This, this is not this is not here to grind out granite yeah from mine yeah this is this is here to feast upon you yeah i like some biomass please oh sorry no i'm not saying please i'm just taking the biomass yeah mm. yeah you're not thinking like a phyrexian at all graham no i'm just good <laughs> cool 
Okay, this is cool. So yeah, I like I like prototype. I like all the other stuff we talked about today. Thank you for all the all the yeah the 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 lore stuff that was actually well was otherwise it's like well, who are these people why are there three versions of their cards four kind of right yeah. yeah yeah I love that by the way by the way from a design perspective I know that this was not your department but I'm just saying from from a set design perspective I love the idea that we get to see four different points in the lives of Urza and Mishra mm-hmm. in the set the brothers wore based on the entirely this the the clash between Urza and Mishra. I think it's really neat to see sort of, you know, like where they started, how they grew up, and then what became of them. I think that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Hats off to the entire design team. Yeah. Yeah. And I do enjoy that Teferi did the daddest thing possible with time travel and went back and looked at a war that he thought was interesting. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, Dad, what you doing? Oh, you know, watching this documentary on on tanks. (laughs) Right? Like, I... I inherited. This was ages ago. I inherited a, a the the Commodore sixty four that I got was mm-hmm. from my uncle, right? And it came with like a bunch of uh, games and stuff. And you know there was you know like baseball games and trains or whatever because he was really into trains. And there, but there was so many American Civil War, yeah, yeah, like on the giant floppy disks, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, like World War Two, like Battle of the Bulge and mm-hmm. Antwerp and stuff like that, but a lot of American Civil War stuff. And it was just very strange. It was like, you're Canadian. Yeah. No, it's, you know, it's that dad core yeah. interest. Yeah. Anyway. Relatable. Yeah. Well, cool. That's our first look at bro. Mm. And uh, if you want to see some bro, well, good news, because later this week at time of release, which is terrifying to us because we have some... This kind of this one kind of snuck up on us. We have a lot of video to prepare in the next uh, mm-hmm. next several days, um, but later this week, Friday, this coming yeah. Friday, November fourth, uh, is the Brothers War pre pre release here at Loading Ready Run. Uh, mm-hmm. So check that out live on twitch.tv slash loading ready run at 10 a.m. Pacific. If you can't catch it live, it will be here on this channel, LRRMTG on YouTube as soon as we are able to. Um, we'll, we'll be, we'll be making that happen. It's going to be great. It's, uh, because Desert Bus is coming up. If you're not familiar with that, check out desertbus.org. It's our annual, it's not our annual, it is a annual, uh, big fundraising event that we do in support of Child's Play, um, that, uh, many people from Loading Ready Run are involved in. It sort of takes, takes over, uh, sort of our lives in our office during that period of November, because that's coming up on November 12th. So soon after the PPR, uh, we don't have guests this time. This is an all loading ready run event because, you know, it's the Brothers War. So we're keeping it, you know, in the family. Uh, and uh, but uh, I'm excited because because uh, I get to participate. It's going to be my first PPR back in some time. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, tune in for that on Friday. Get to see world first look at sealed gameplay for the Brothers War. That should be a lot of fun. And if you like what you see, then you can pre-order yourself some bro over at cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Please do that. Let them know we sent you. Get yourself a button that says, if I live through this turn, I have lethal. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. So until next time, I've been Graham, joined by Cameron huh? and Kathleen. Lore! <laughs> Paul's been here on tech. Heather gets these online. Thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you next time. Bye.